best. Bookbits.com presents The Footprints to Success by Richmond Din. What is The Footprints to Success? The Footprints to Success is a powerful and effective actionable roadmap to creating the life of your dreams. Success leaves footprints, and this book is not about reinventing the wheel, but about understanding how to follow those footprints so you can achieve greater success in any area of your life. This book will cover how to identify the footprints that has led to every success story on the planet, but also will guide you through how to implement these traits and habits into your daily life. If you're waiting to improve your finances, relationships, health, emotional well-being, and just overall level of happiness in your life, then this book is for you. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Footprints to Success. The purpose life is to be happy. Your job is to find out and decide what makes you happy and simply act on that decision every single day. Our beliefs are the center of what controls all our emotions and actions, and hence our results. Not just self-belief as in the context of certainty, but our beliefs about events, life, people, money, relationships, health, and also about ourselves, our identity, and who we are as a person. Our beliefs about anything and everything controls our results and ultimately our destiny. How powerful our beliefs can control every single aspect of our lives, because we would do whatever it takes to defend our beliefs. Because in life, you get what you focus on, what you pay attention to grows, and what you think about expands. Introduction. If you believe that the principles are false and will not work, then they will not work. However, if you believe that they will work and have the power to transform every area and level of your life, then they will work. The principles only work if you work them, such as life only works if you live it. What people think success is, a straight line. The actual reality is a squiggly line. The secret to all success is constantly living on the edge of your comfort zone. The secret to all success is constantly living on the edge of your comfort zone. Uncomfortable, the more successful you will be. Vision. The journey to ultimate success always begins with a compelling vision. You may call this a goal, a target, an outcome, a dream, or a destination. Whatever term you are familiar with, using the bottom line is this. To get from where you are to where you want to be, you need to firstly know exactly where it is you want to be. As obvious as this may sound, surprisingly less than 3% of people set goals and visions for their life, and less than 10% of businesses set goals and visions for their business. When you don't set goals. Number one, you do things that you don't need to do. Number two, you forget to do the things you need to do or want to do. And number three, you spend more resources achieving your outcome, and that's assuming your outcome is even achieved. And number four, you spend so much more time achieving your outcome, and that's assuming your outcome is achieved. Most goals are not achieved because people call it a goal. People have a weak emotional attachment to the word goals, and so it doesn't juice them up or excite them into taking action. Most goals are not achieved because people call it a goal. You need to be labeling your goals as outcomes, results, vision, or standards. The terms outcomes and results are more impactful as they define what you ultimately really, really want. The other key difference between a goal and a vision is that goal is looking into the future of the outcome you want, whereas a vision is a standing in the future and looking backwards into the past of an outcome that you've imagined has already been completed. Placing yourself in the future and looking back being completely proud of what you have achieved. Setting yourself a clear vision gives you a deeper sense of certainty and confidence, which is the fuel that drives success. There is a fine line between ego and confidence, and that line is called intention. Ego comes from a place of insecurity. The moment you call your goal an outcome, a vision, or better yet, a standard for your life, is the moment you attach your identity to the task. You immediately begin to say to yourself, this is no longer a goal I'm trying to achieve, but rather just being who I am. The strongest force in the human personality is to remain consistent with who you believe you are. The number one rule to success is that you must have a vision. You have to be able to imagine what it is that you want to create in your life and have the belief that you can achieve it. Setting a vision. Using the SMART principle. They must be specific, measurable, ambitious, realistic, time-bound. Specific. Vague goals equate to vague results. Specific and clear goals equate to specific and clear results. Remember, clarity is power. Clarity is power. Measurable. If we can't measure it, how do we know if we're on track and moving forward? More importantly, how do we know we got what we want? Ambitious. What's the point in setting a vision that is way too easy for you to achieve? 
it's more important to play full out and stretch yourself than to obtain the actual outcome. Personal growth only counts when it's not easy. Realistic, time bound. Finally, you must have a time frame. Without a time reference, the vision becomes immeasurable. Remember, if you have a dream worth dying for, then you'll have a life worth living for. So what type of vision should you be setting for your life? The best way to answer this question is to look at the wheel of life. There are six broad categories of your life of which you need to be setting a vision and a standard for each category. Fitness and health, family and relationships, fun and leisure, faith, feelings and emotions, and finances. Exercises. Select an area from the wheel of life and write down your 10-year vision for this area. Write down your five-year vision. Write down your three-year vision. Write down your one-year vision and write down your standards, your non-negotiables, your code of conduct. Hunger. By far the most important ingredient to all success is hunger. Hunger delivers us the ambition to move forward and the inner drive to consistently want more. It gives us the deep insatiable thirst that makes us focused and persistent and pulls us towards our dreams. It makes us push through and fight when times are tough and it allows us to stretch beyond what we believe we can do and stimulates growth. It makes us resourceful when we lack resources and heightens our sense of awareness, opening up our intuition. And most importantly, hunger allows us to achieve both short-term and long-term sustained success. Without this, the other pillars of success crumble. It is without doubt that hunger is the foundation for all success. One of the most common comments spoken in a post-interview from the losing team after a sporting match is some version of the following. They simply just wanted it more than we did. They were just hungrier than we were. So the big question is, where does hunger come from and how do we create more of it? Four simple words, your compelling reasons why. Hunger is created from the motivating factors why this vision is so important to you and the more reasons you have and the deeper for each of those reasons are, the hungrier you will become. The following diagram is called the success cycle. Beliefs turn into your emotions, emotions turn into your actions and your actions turn into your results. It's not what you do that creates success, but why you do it. And one key distinction and beliefs that I've learned from my mentors is that a big part of their hunger comes from this belief that success is your moral obligation. Your moral obligation. Success is your birthright. The moment you make success your moral obligation is the moment you decide that you will no longer settle for less than you have, be, do, or deserve. If you truly believe that there is greatness within you and you do not show that to the world, then you're being selfish. Your why must make you cry. It must inspire you every day. It must wake you up early in the morning and keep you up late at night. It must juice you to take action and give you the courage to push through all setbacks that will come your way. Hunger also provides you with the ability to maintain focus and direction. You see in life, you get what you focus on. You get what you pay attention to, what you think about expands. Without a strong sense of why, your brain will simply not know what is important to focus on. Exercise. In reference for the vision you created for yourself in Chapter 1, please write down, why is this so important to you? What will it cost you if it does not happen? What would your life look like even when you did achieve this? How would it make you feel to achieve this? What kind of person would you become? Now, when it comes to achieving our vision, there are two major sacrifices you will have to make in order to achieve your outcome. And the sacrifices will either be an investment in your time or your money. In most cases, it will be both. How much time are you willing to invest in per week or per month to turn this vision into reality? How much more money are you willing to invest per week or per month to turn this vision into a reality? Certainty. You may call this faith, trust, conviction, confidence, belief, or fact. Either way, certainty is a belief or feeling of conviction about what something means. Your beliefs shape your destiny. Certainty is about the building blocks which give rise to the power of will, the power of faith, the trait of courage, and the gift of compassion. 99% of our fears and doubts hinder our success and a place a handbrake on our progress. If you were going to fear anything, then fear the pain of regret. Fear the pain of looking back thinking, if only. Fear the pain of looking back and thinking, damn, I wish I had. Or one of the worst fears of all is the fear of not making a decision and playing small for the rest of your life. One of the most important mindset traits that you need to have in achieving your goals is to have absolute certainty in your ability. The biggest lie you can ever tell yourself is that you can't and that you are not good enough. Certainty is simply a feeling. It is an emotional state. And all emotions are created by three ingredients called the emotional triad. 
The emotional triad is made up of physiology, self-talk, and beliefs. Physiology. How much power your physiology can have over the way you feel. Amy Cuddy, a Harvard graduate, showed that the power of posing, standing in a winning Superman position for two minutes would produce a spike in testosterone, the hormone responsible for feeling confident and certain, whilst at the same time showed a reduction in cortisol, which is the hormone responsible for stress and anxiety. Self-talk. This refers to the internal dialogue that we all have with ourselves. Whether we are conscious of it or not, we all talk to ourselves and some of the thought patterns can have a positive or negative impact on the way we feel. Of all judgments we make, none has more weight than the ones we make on ourselves. Examples of negative self-talk may include, I am really stressed by this. What if I fail? This is the worst thing that can happen. What if they don't like me? Examples of positive self-talk may include, I'm looking forward to learning from this. This will really make me grow. I'm excited about the challenge. I'm proud that I'm giving it a go. Beliefs. A belief is a feeling of certainty about what something means. The building blocks of a belief are called references, which can be pictured like legs on a table. Where the legs are the references and the tabletop is a belief. The more legs you have to support the tabletop, the stronger your belief will be. Add more legs on your empowering beliefs of I can and plant the seeds of doubt and question the legs on the table of I can't. Your biggest problem right now is forgetting how brilliant you really are, how amazing and outstanding you really are. Because anytime you focus on why you can't do something, you are forgetting all the great things that you have accomplished in the past. And you've forgotten how persistent you can be, how resilient, determined, tenacious, hungry, driven, and certain you can be. Understanding that we all have rules and conditions of the things that must happen in order for us to feel certain. Some rules can be disempowering, whilst others empowering. Some rules we can control, whilst some we have no control over. To create lasting certainty, you must focus on reconstructing these disempowering rules to empowering rules. What's the point in not believing in yourself? It's the worst time-wasting activity you can do. Faith occurs when your imagination is directed onto the best possible outcome. Fear and doubt occurs when your imagination is directed towards the worst possible outcome. Both have not happened yet, so if you're going to make something up and imagine what has not happened yet, then you may as well make up a compelling future. The journey to success always begins with two simple words, I can. Proaction. Knowledge is no longer power. Action is power. Certainly back in the pre-1800s, knowledge was power and a pen had more power than a sword. Fast forward today, it's the person who takes the most swings with the sword that will end up on top. What makes the difference between success and failure in today's world is not what we know, but what we do. Most people are hooked on a drug called Hopem because they have this belief that they can sit at home and hope to manifest a dream life without doing anything. The key difference between the successful and non-successful is that successful people create their dreams while they are awake, whilst non-successful people create their dreams while they are asleep. Hunger is the magic fuel that drives you into action. The next common reason that stops people from taking action is fear. Who is winning the day? The fear or you? Who is really in charge? And more energy and attention. We are all 100% responsible for how we feel and what we focus on. What we pay attention to is the only thing we can control. And at the end of the day, you need to decide which side of the fence you want to live on. Fear and doubt. Or how brilliant and amazing you really are. Your biggest problem right now is forgetting how brilliant you really are, how great you really are, how amazing you really are, how outstanding you really are, how determined, persistent, ambitious, hungry, strong, honest, resilient, and resourceful you really are. Too many people tiptoe through life hoping to safely make it to death. The third most common reason that stops people from taking action is a self-deflating, limiting belief that things need to be perfect for you to start, that everything has to be right, in order, and sorted for you to start that all the pieces have to fall into place. The problem with this belief is that it will never be perfect. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. And premise for this phrase is to employ the belief that when you take action, only two things can happen. You either get a valuable lesson or the outcome. In life, you only ever get two things and two things only. You either get the lesson or the outcome. And almost always, the lesson is more valuable than the outcome. And because the lesson makes you smarter, stronger, and wiser, and that knowledge gives you a massive advantage to succeed the next time, and the beautiful thing, action takers get a reward with either the lesson or the outcome. Sadly, procrastinators get neither. 
It's a complete win-win situation. You simply cannot lose by taking action. Good things may come to those who wait, but great things come to those who take massive action and make shit happen. If you're going to procrastinate, then procrastinate later. Ideally, save the procrastination for when you're sleeping in your coffin. Tony Robbins says, when you talk about it, it's a dream. When you envision it, it's exciting. When you plan it, it's possible. When you schedule it, it's real. Never ever forget to celebrate along the path to success. Presilience. The road to success is never straight and smooth. It's often littered with potholes, speed humps, and sometimes even forks with no clear signs on which way to go. Presilience is the ability to be persistent and resilient at the same time. This means that you are able to both recover from and persevere through any adversary, especially when things don't go your way. Some people call this hustle, while others may call it push, grit, perseverance, tenacity, or stamina. Your brain is built to survive, to protect you, to make you feel safe. It is not designed to make you succeed. You only ever fail when you stop playing the game. When persilience becomes a part of your mental framework and becomes a standard and an expectation of the game, you begin to play it differently. The six human needs are as follows. The need for certainty, uncertainty, variety, significance, love and connection, growth and contribution. The first four, certainty, uncertainty, variety, significance, love and connection are the needs of our consciousness and personality. The final two, growth and contribution, are the needs, however, the order of which we value them and the method of how we attain them dictates our destiny. Resourcefulness. The number one reason why people fail is due to a lack of resourcefulness. In fact, your greatest resource is your own resourcefulness, and the solution to all your problems is always staring at you in front of the mirror. Your T5. Have you ever wondered why 2% of people succeed at applying the principle to success and the rest fail? Have you ever wondered what makes them so different? It all comes down to who you spent time with, more importantly, whom you spend most of your time with, that is, your top five alliances. In fact, one of the most important decisions you will ever have to make in your entire life is actually deciding that this is an important decision, and the decision is about who you spend time with. Obviously, the most important person is your spouse, followed by the next four people you will consciously decide to have in your inner circle and peer group. You see, your current situation and results in your life is a direct reflection of the standards you set yourself because in life, you get what you tolerate. And the biggest influencer of what sets your standards in the long term is who you spend more time with. Because once we commit ourselves to a tribe, we will do whatever it takes to be part of that tribe. And that means over time, we will match our standards to the standards of your tribe or top five. The reasons why motivation never lasts is because your standards are not changed. If you're earning $100,000 per year and you want to earn half a million dollars a year, then you must begin to spend time with people in that income bracket because they will set the standards of how you will live your life. More than that, they set the belief, structures, mindset, and values that you need to employ to be able to achieve what they achieve. In life, you always get what you focus on because what you focus on expands. My standards outgrew the tribe and I made a fatal error in not slowly finding myself a new tribe to continually raise or at least keep my new standards. Success breeds success and success is contagious. You are the average of the top five people you spend most time with. Not just from an income perspective, but also the way you dress, the way you eat, your level of health and fitness, what you believe, the language that you use to the way you parent your children. Every aspect of your life becomes adversely affected by your peer group every aspect. It all comes down to who you spend time with. Do not, I repeat, do not underestimate the power of your peer group. They silently influence you more than you would ever know. While it's great to have support from your peers, ultimately to grow to the next level, you need a peer group that will constantly challenge and push us to grow to the next level. Spend more time with the most successful or positive person in your current top five and less time with the least successful person and least positive. Then you can ask that person to introduce you to one or two people in their top five that you can begin to spend time with as well. And you can slowly build your way up from there. You can volunteer to crew at success seminars, or you could also seek mentorship. Intuition. Every road to success leaves footprints. Footprints of which can be traced back to its source to find out exactly how someone walked the path to success. And the quickest way to achieve your vision is to model another person who has achieved what you're aiming to do and to follow their footprints. Not only is this the quickest way, it is the method that will give you the most certainty in achieving your outcome. 
Your life will only present to you a handful of big forks in the road. And when this happens, you need to have more certainty in your own intuition than the certainty of the outcome you're after. Following your heart is scary. Yes, it cannot see far into the future, but it always knows what's next. Everything that occurs in life has both positive and negative aspects. The moment you understand this and understand that there is a divine hidden perfection in the universe, you'll be able to get into that state of equanimity. Identity. The strongest force in the human personality is to remain congruent and integrity with who you believe you are, and the people will always follow through and take action on who they believe they are. I firmly believe that we are all born with greatness, with brilliance, with divine power, and we are all destined to shine in our own unique special way. And any time you let your fears, worries, stresses, anxieties, or negative identities shape who you are, the real truth is that you are really playing it small. Playing small is being safe, and this is the most selfish thing you can do. Because if you truly believe that there is greatness within you, and you are not calling yourself to do it, then you are being selfish. Because being small does not benefit your family, your friends, your colleagues, your community, and it does not benefit the world in any shape or form. By playing small, the only person it benefits is you. That is why it is selfish. How much longer do you want to be selfish for? Some empowering beliefs that you can use to help you along your journey to success are... I am powerful beyond my wildest dreams. I am a visionary. I know what I want. I am purposeful in all that I do. I am the ultimate believer in myself. I am the most proactive person I know. Action is my middle name. I am as tough as steel. I never give up. I am resourceful as they come. I always find a way. I am worthy of love. I am infectious to be around. I ooze fun, positive energy. I am a good person with a big heart. I am intelligent. I am outstanding. And... I am amazing. Play with chance and work with opportunity. Everything ends a question of behavior in life and you have two categories of people. Number one, those who dread failure at any moment and are more pessimistic. And last, number two, those who are on the contrary seek only success and great results and have a more positive attitude to life. And that's a wrap on the book summary of The Footprints to Success by Richmond Din. Check out our YouTube channel with over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. Check out our website if you're into the written and audio book summary. Subscribe to our email list to get the latest book summaries emailed to you directly by hitting the link in the comments below. Also, download mixcloud.com where you can get the podcast with over 500 audiobook summaries. Check out our Instagram page, bestbookbits.com, to follow us for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this of the footprints to success. Go out there and follow Richmond Din on social media. Take care. Bye-bye now.